Hello, welcome back to another lesson on Make Science Easy. Today we're going to be starting the chemistry lessons. And in the very first chemistry lesson, we are going to be looking at solids, liquids, and gases. We're going to find out what they are, we're going to find out how they behave, and why they behave in that way. So the very first thing we need to know when we're thinking about solids, liquids, and gases is something called kinetic theory. Now, what kinetic theory basically tells us is that all physical substances are made up of tiny little balls. And these tiny little balls are called particles. And for now, just calling them particles and understanding that everything is made up of particles is fine. We are going to look at this in a lot more detail, however, in later lessons. Now, the behaviour of these particles, the way they behave, how they're arranged affects the state of matter that a substance is in. And we call the theory which explains the physical properties of substances based on how particles are arranged, how they behave, what they're doing, we call this kinetic theory. Now kinetic obviously implies movement. So it's really the movement of these particles that affects the state of matter that a substance is in. And there are three main states of matter that any substance can have. Solid, liquid and gas. Now there is actually a fourth state of matter called plasma and we're not really that interested in this state of matter despite the fact that 99.9% .9 of all of the matter in all of the universe is plasma. For our purposes we're not going to be looking at it in too much detail because it's mainly solids, liquids and gases that make up the earth and the world around us. So let's have a look at how the particles are arranged in the three states of matter. The first state of matter we're going to look at are solids. So, we can see in our solid that the particles are arranged in a uniform pattern. There are four rows of five particles. Now this is a very, very small snapshot of a solid. These particles are tiny, far too small to see with your eye. But it gives us an impression of how these particles will be arranged. Also worth remembering that the particles are going to be in three dimensions. This only shows us in two dimensions. Now the particles in the solid are also in a fixed position. This means they cannot move, they cannot swap places with each other, they are completely fixed. But the particles can vibrate around a fixed point, but the particles cannot exchange places with each other. Now there are no gaps at all between these particles. The particles are constantly touching. And this is because there are very strong intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are the forces between particles and they hold particles together. Because the forces are so strong in a solid, the particles cannot move, they can only vibrate. Our next state of matter is the liquid. Now in a liquid, the particles are arranged randomly. But the particles are free to move, they're not in a fixed position. So this is different to a solid where the particles are arranged in a uniform way and they can only vibrate. There are no gaps between the particles. The particles are constantly touching. Remember, this is a 2D model, not showing the full 3D, so it may appear there are some gaps. And the intermolecular forces between the particles are moderate in strength. This means the particles can move freely, but they're still touching. They're still being held together by quite a strong force. The final state of matter are gases. And particles are arranged randomly in gases, and they're free to move, and they're not in a fixed position. And there are large gaps between the particles in a gas. And the intermolecular forces between these particles are very weak. This is why there are such large gaps between the particles. Because there's not much force holding the particles together, they can spread out, they can move freely. So, let's take a look at the properties of solids. Solids have a fixed shape solids cannot flow, solids cannot be compressed or squashed, and solids have a fixed volume. So solids are very static, not a lot happens to them. And the reason for this is that the particles in the solid, as we've already seen, cannot move. So if the particles cannot move, the shape cannot change, so it must be fixed. If the particles cannot move, they cannot move past each other, so solids cannot flow in the same way that liquids can. 
If you try and squash a solid, the particles have got nowhere to go. There's no gap for those particles to move into, so you cannot squash a solid, and therefore a solid has a fixed volume. It cannot change because there are no spaces available inside of it. Liquids, on the other hand, do not have a fixed shape. They always take the shape of their container. Whichever container you put a liquid into, a liquid will always form the same shape as a container. On the right, we can see a picture of a jug. The liquid has taken the shape of that jug. So a liquid will always take the shape of its container. Liquids can flow, we can pour them. But just like a solid, liquids cannot be compressed or squashed. And liquids do have a fixed volume. The reason why liquids don't have a fit shape and they can flow is because the particles can move around each other. If the particles are free to move, the shape can change. If the particles are free to move, the liquid can flow. And the reason why you can't squash or compress a liquid and why it has a fixed volume is, again, just like a solid, there are no spaces between a particle. If there are no spaces between a particle, you can't make the particles move closer together. If you can't make the particles move closer together or further apart, then the volume must be fixed. If you can't make the particles move closer together, then you cannot compress or squash a liquid. The properties of gases are quite different. So gases do not have a fixed shape, just like a liquid, but they completely fill their container. Gases flow, just like a liquid. And gases can be compressed and they can be squashed and they do not have a fixed volume. So gases don't have a fixed shape and they flow because gas particles are free to move, but they fill the shape of their container because gas particles can move in all directions. Liquid particles cannot escape the liquid. Gas particles can move wherever they want. So they take the shape of their container and they completely fill their container as well. Because there are large gaps between the particles and the gas, we can easily squash a gas because we can move the particles closer together. This reduces the volume of the gas. But if we heat up a gas, the particles move faster, they move further apart from each other, and that gas will actually expand. So you can change the volume of a gas very easily. So let's very quickly compare these properties. So in a solid, particles are touching. There are no gaps between particles. The particles are in a fixed position. The particle arrangement is very organized. In a liquid, the particles are touching and there are still no gaps between particles, but the particles are free to move and the particles are randomly arranged. In a gas, particles are not touching. There are big gaps between the particles. Particles are free to move and particles are randomly organized. And the reason for this is because in a solid, the intermolecular forces are very strong. Liquids, they're slightly weaker, and gases, they are very weak. So as you move from solid to liquid to gas, the strength of the intermolecular forces, the forces holding particles together, becomes weaker. The physical properties of a solid, they have a fixed shape and a fixed volume, they cannot flow. Liquids have a fixed volume, they do not have a fixed shape, they take the shape of their container and they can flow. Gases do not have a fixed volume, they'll fill its container, they don't have a fixed shape, they'll take the shape of its container, and they can flow. So, solids, liquids, and gases have different properties because the particles are arranged differently in each state of matter, and the particles behave differently in each state of matter. So this is kinetic theory. The idea that different states of matter behave differently because of what the particles inside of them are doing. In summary, all substances are made up of particles. There are three states of matter a substance can have, solid, liquid, or gas. Kinetic theory explains how the behavior of particles affects the properties of each state of matter. Solids have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Their particles are arranged in an organized pattern. Liquids have a fixed volume, but not a fixed shape. Their particles are randomly arranged. And gases have neither fixed shape or fixed volume. The particles are spread out and are randomly arranged. I really hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I've explained the key ideas for you about solids, liquids and gases. Don't forget to check out the next lesson in this series. I'm sure you're going to enjoy that too. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot if you do. 
And if you have really enjoyed these lessons and you found them useful, you can check out our website www.makescienceeasy.com. The URL is in the description below and you can check out our full courses which you can sign up to for free. Each lesson comes with a video lesson like this and loads more to help make sure that you're learning science. Until next lesson, keep on learning.